And international energy agencies going to work with Kenya in the energy space. Your Excellency, when I attended one of the conferences sometimes. And secure one for everybody. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you. Stabilize you very quickly because there was so much power coming. We are honored and I want to welcome. And when that was withdrawn and the problem do much, much better. Your Excellency, Kenya is announced our commitment to international energy standards and best practices. It enhances and facilitates capacity building and knowledge exchange, empowering us, accelerating access to clean cooking and strengthening policy uh, planning to accelerate progress towards global, the goal of doubling energy efficiency. Open the ninth global conference on energy efficiency and as Director Dr. Fatih Niro, President William Ruto, the President of the Republic of Kenya in the United States of America on official duty. And he has sent me with very well together when we make deliberate efforts of incorporating and doubling energy efficiency in every strand of development efforts. Uh, Kenya Mission 2030, we are determined to deploy modern infrastructure across gas and solar. Distinguished delegates, our partnership with the International Energy Bank, the support and technical assistance provided by the office in cultivating collaboration and strengthening public pride informed by solid research research. This is important because impact research requires massive resources in sector-specific disciplines. In this regard, we call upon the international community to ensure resources as committed during COP28 and similar forums are availed to, among other initiatives, further innovations that promote climate action in Kenya and the African continent. Distinguished delegates, this conference, therefore, is a moment to learn good practices from our peers as well as those ahead of us. It is also time to identify national and international policy gaps that heed the adjustment of equipment, installations, and other infrastructure. We need to urgently review and harmonize our policies to, among other ways, of, as Kenya transitions to green energy. We are addressing the cost of production while making power more reliable and more available. Hereby inviting investment from regional and international partners to plug the various pillars of the bottom-up economic transformation agenda. In particular, distinguished delegates, we take pride that Kenya is among the five member countries from Africa in the International Energy Agency. We thank you for Asante Nisan. here in Nairobi, after the conference, take a trip to the Mara, the Lion, the King of the Jungle, but don't the Kenyan coast in Mombasa, in Malindi, and do some bit of sunbathing. We have very exotic beaches. And very Mara, <laughs> and efficiency around the energy sector, clean and green. Africa. As I told the 
uh, my African uh, colleagues. We do not at the IEA tell the African countries, you should use this fuel, you shouldn't use that fuel. It's up to them to decide which fuel they use, but whatever fuel they use, whatever their technology choices, energy efficiency should be there. And it is also, uh, in my uh, view, essential to any economically, and environmentally sound energy policies. And when we look at the world, unfortunately, we don't see, despite a lot of efforts, enough push happening. I'll give you one data, so to give you a few data, but just to make the thing understand. In the entire world today, more than 100 countries do not have building standards. When you build a building, there are not right energy efficient standards and this building is built. And today, when we uh, look at the global picture, half of the buildings being is, uh, built today will have no efficiency standards and a building has a lifetime of 50, 60 years and they will waste energy for years to come. Such a pity. If you have the, if you have the energy efficient standards, you could save a lot of energy from cooling and from uh, uh, heating uh, expenses uh, there. We, uh, one of our uh, jobs is to make sure that the governments work together. In fact, this, the idea of having such a global annual energy efficiency conference is to bring everybody together. Two years ago, we had a major meeting in, uh, in Denmark, in Sonderburg, uh, where uh, 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 my colleague Dan Jorgensen uh, hosted. It was a major meeting and brought again many people together. It was the first after the COVID. And last year, this is important, last year, we had in Paris, in Versailles. And in that meeting, we came up with a suggestion. Why don't we come together and have a declaration to aim to double the energy efficiency improvement in the world? So we declared this about 46 countries, if I'm not wrong, Brian, so 46 countries. And this was the basis doubling energy efficiency improvement. This was the basis for COP28 in Dubai, in Dubai consensus, in addition to our other suggestion, tripping the renewable capacity to be part of the, uh, the uh, Dubai consensus, doubling energy efficiency. So the eighth version of our annual efficiency conference gave birth to the, the, uh, to the COP28 uh, consensus uh, coming in uh, Dubai. So I am very happy that uh, it has a great uh, impact uh, on that, but uh, I would like to also thank here the European Commission, because when we hit the doubling the energy efficiency, the European uh, Commission was uh, really working very hard with its strong diplomatic uh, uh, muscles to bring many countries together, so uh, uh, many thanks uh, uh, for that. So we make these international efforts, bring the countries together to improve the energy efficiency, but we also work, uh, dear colleagues, with the countries one by one. I'll give you a few examples uh, with uh, Ghana. I don't know if we have colleagues from Ghana uh, here with us uh, uh, today, but with Ghana we work on developing the, uh, the efficiency standards for appliances, which is the appliances, home appliances in, in Ghana. South Africa, we are working with the South African colleagues to develop their national energy efficiency strategy. Or we work with uh, Indonesia, with Indonesia in order to put standards for the uh, fuel efficiency standards for trucks, which is an important uh, uh, consumer of uh, uh, energy. Or go somewhere else, Brazil. We so, heavy industry. So our job in terms of energy efficiency is on one hand bring the countries together to give an international, create international momentum for energy efficiency, 
but at the same time, we work with uh, the countries on the ground to learn from each other our good experiences, bad experiences from one country to another to develop uh, the uh, energy efficiency uh, uh, program. So this is uh, what we are uh, doing. And the, uh, what I hear from uh, my uh, colleague, uh, Brian uh, Motherway, who is the our energy efficiency uh, uh, guru, that the more and more countries are asking us to develop their energy efficiency programs, which makes us uh, very happy because energy efficiency is one of the areas in the energy sector where the learning from one experience for the other countries is easier. You cannot copy and paste, but you can learn from each other's experiences very easily because there are many similarities uh, uh, there. So, uh, uh, dear colleagues, uh, I wanted to finish uh, my words that the Today, when I look at the global trends, clean energy transitions are happening fast and faster than many people realize in terms of renewables, in terms of the investment trends. We are going to, in one week of time, we are going to announce the investment trends in clean energy and in, fact, in energy in general, in a, a electric cars, big change there. If any country is behind this change, position itself wrongly, not only they will make a, a, a bad thing for the planet, but for their own country and for their own economy. So therefore, it is important to look at the, where the growth, the economic growth uh, will come from. An international energy agency is going to work with Kenya, Africa, and with the, all the countries to make sure that the, uh, the future of the energy sector is a clean one, sustainable one, and secure one for everybody. It's my honor to welcome you to this year's Global Energy, energy Conference co-hosted by IEA. This is event marks a significant milestone as the first time the forum is being held in Africa. Uh, in an acknowledgement of the critical role the continent will play in clean energy transition and Kenya's strong leadership on energy efficiency in particular. We are thrilled to have such esteemed delegates in attendance. Like I've mentioned, we really are honored and I want to welcome all of us again to Nairobi, Kenya. I'm sure that the Deputy President will do, will do much, much better. Your Excellency, Kenya is an associate member of IEA. This partnership provides Kenya and other African countries direct access to IEA's vast reservoir of expertise, best practices in energy policy, technology, data analysis, like I've mentioned what IEA was able to do for Europe, and modeling. Through this collaboration, we are poised to strengthen our energy sector and advance towards uh, sustainable development goals. Kenya Association with the IEA underscores our commitment to international energy standards and best practices. It enhances our potential to attract increased private capital inflows to our energy sector. Additionally, our partnership with the IEA facilitates capacity building and knowledge exchange, empowering us to implement effective energy policies and technologies tailored to our specific needs and challenges. In collaboration with IEA, Your Excellency, the IEA, uh, Kenya is working on initiatives aimed at promoting renewable energy deployment, enhancing energy efficiency, accelerating access to clean cooking and strengthening policy uh, planning. Through joint efforts, we are striving to build a resilient and sustainable energy a future for our nation and contribute to global efforts in combating uh, climate change. The conference brings together ministers, CEOs, and other senior leaders to accelerate progress towards global, the goal of doubling energy efficiency uh, progress this decade as agreed uh, by governments in COP28. 
The ninth global conference also represents an opportunity to deepen collaboration and unlock opportunities for energy efficiency to ensure a sustainable energy transition in emerging and developing economies. This conference happens when Kenya is leading the world in the march towards 100% green, clean energy. Renewable energy accounts for almost 90% of our generation and consumption. To achieve net zero carbon emissions by the target year 2050, Kenya requires over 600 billion US dollars in investment. This calls for sustained joint rescue mobilization, partnership, and investment from local and international actors. Harnessing geothermal, wind, and solar energy is a bridge from fossil fuel to fully renewable sustainable energy as per the COP28 commitment on zero carbon emissions. Alongside raising awareness on the negative impact of climate change, we are actively planting seedlings across the country, targeting 15 billion trees by the year 2032. On the other hand, Kenya is assembling electric vehicles. It is another way of progressively reducing and eliminating fossil fuel-powered mobility, which contributes to the carbon emission burden. Distinguished delegates, and our development blueprint, Kenya Vision 2030, we are determined to deploy modern infrastructure across strategic sectors of the economy to catalyze transformation of our nation into a middle-income country. Central to our bottom-up economic transformation agenda is energy efficiency and increasing electricity access, not only through the national grid, but also home-based sources like biogas and solar. Distinguished delegates, our partnership with the International Energy Agency as an association member country is by voto in our commitment to advancing energy efficiency and renewable energy deployment. The support and technical assistance provided by the International Energy Agency will strengthen our capacity in data collection, policy planning, and drive forward our renewable energy agenda. Indeed, this forms the gist of this conference in cultivating collaboration and strengthening public-private partnership in funding transformative transformative consumer-focused innovations informed by solid research-based data. This is important because impact research requires massive resources in sector-specific disciplines. In this regard, we call upon the international community to ensure resources as committed during COP28 and similar forums are availed to, among other initiatives, FAD innovations that promote climate action in Kenya and the African continent. This conference, therefore, is a moment to learn good practices from our peers as well as those ahead of us. It is also time to identify national and international policy gaps that heed adjustment of equipment, installations, and other infrastructure to allow for competitive technology that is cost effective. On this note, we need to urgently review and harmonize our policies to, among other ways, offer subsidy in the manufacture and installation of energy efficient equipment and other infrastructures. Such subsidies should also apply to the purchase and installation of solar panels and other sources of green energy. As Kenya transitions to green energy, we are addressing the cost of production while making power more reliable and more available. We are hereby inviting investment from regional and international partners to plug the various pillars of the bottom-up economic transformation agenda. In particular, we are ready to have direct engagement with companies and other entities for business investment in clean and energy efficiency. Distinguished delegates, 
we take pride that Kenya is among the five member countries from Africa in the International Energy Agency. We thank you for the confidence in us. With Africa emerging as one of the fastest growing regions, the peace, security, and stability we enjoy in Kenya creates an enabling environment for its investments to thrive. We are also the launchpad to accessing the more than 500 million people in the East African community and indeed the rest of the continent. Kenya is ready for business. Let us define and work for the future where energy and efficiency is a catalyst for the inclusive growth and shared prosperity. It is therefore my pleasure to declare this International Energy Agency ninth Annual Global Conference on Energy Efficiency held here in Nairobi officially open. Asante Nisana. I wish you a pleasant stay in Nairobi in Kenya. And please, when you are done in this conference, Kenya is the destination of choice for tourism. And I want to urge you that if you have never been to the Masai Mara, the eighth ward of the world, you don't know what you are missing. Please take advantage when you are here in Nairobi after the conference, take a trip to the Mara and go and see the big five. The elephant, the lion, the king of the jungle, but don't go too near, they are a bit dangerous. Go and see what we have. If you have some bit of time, fly to the Kenyan coast in Mombasa, in Malindi, and do some bit of sunbathing. We have very exotic beaches and very hospitable people. Our cultural heritage is next to none in the world. Go and meet the Maasai people and interact with them and enjoy our cultural heritage. And finally, with a light touch, the foreign exchange you came with, make sure. <laughs> Whatever is remaining, please spread it here. Thank you very much, Asante Nisar. While we have lost biodiversity in destruction of forests and other natural resources to farming, integrating sustainable agriculture and food systems remain central to a clean environment. This is besides innovations that recycle from waste into green energy in form of biogas, electricity for machinery, and other domestic use, especially clean cooking. While food is an important resource, we must work on affordable, easy-to-use innovations, more so for our farmers. Breaking down domestic biomass in the farm is a direct and sustainable way of reducing the greenhouse gases like methane, which are fueling climate change. In this regard, raising awareness, capacity building, and initial investment requires that we work together in community-driven initiatives. Kenya is among African countries that have borne the burden of climate change. We commit to leading continental and global initiatives of combating this phenomena through diverse measures supported. Going green and clean is not enough. We must establish and promote proficient and efficient energy systems in all sectors of our economy. States across the globe are working harder with partners on achieving SDGs by 2030, even as Africa remains focused on a transformed continent as underpinned by Agenda 2063. Such transformation rights on enormous energy. Meeting the growing demand during this decade does not always call for huge generation capacity expansion, but unlocking conservation and efficiency in consumption. We can only transform our world together when we make deliberate efforts of incorporating and doubling energy efficiency 
in every strand of development. In industry <coughs> and manufacturing, for instance, proficiency ensures less energy is used to produce more. This in turn reduces pressure on the scarce resources as we fight climate change. <coughs> 